What in the world is this notch for? While I was working, it had me thinking, what is this little notch for? It's got a magnet here and then a notch, and I didn't even know what this feature was used for. So let's find out in today's video. Hey, how's everybody doing out there? Welcome to CLO Ed TV, where we cover various projects and learn about art, design, and engineering. As of late, I've been doing a lot of construction work, including a patio cover, which I'll show here, and also prepping up to do other buildings and eventually work up to building CLO Academy. Oh, and by the way, be sure to put a thumbs up on this video and also share the video out. And if you would like to support the CLO Academy campaign, link will be in the description below. So as I was working, I had to get me a new hammer, had to get some new tools, and I noticed that I had to get a framing hammer because if you get into carpentry construction, you got to have a framing hammer. Now, unlike uh, your claw hammer or let's say a sledgehammer, you've got a little bit more weight than your claw hammer. But also, I was wondering when I looked into this hammer, there is a notch with a magnet right here. And I'll show that right there. And I was so confused as to what the heck this was because I had never seen it on a hammer before. So that's what today's video is about. So let's go into some footage first. And then on the back end, we'll talk about more about this feature. Okay, so today I'm going to be using two types of nails. You have your 8D, two and a half inch. It has a smaller shaft. Over to the right, we have a 20D, four inch. This is good for framing. And it has a thicker shaft and longer. So we're gonna try that feature on the hammer and see is it easier to nail the four inch in or the two and a half inch. Okay, all you gotta do is take your nail, all right? Set it in the groove just like this. And set it on the magnet, it holds itself upside down, holds it, and set the nail. I'm gonna bring you in closer so you can see how it works again. Okay, I'm gonna use my claw on my hammer, pull the nail out, and it just sets the nail right in. So that way, if you have to do it one handed or if you're high set up, you don't have to use two hands. Set the nail in, and now this doesn't work as good uh, hammering down, but there goes the nail right there and in. And then you could just tap and notice I just did it with one hand. Let me zoom out so you can see it. All right, this time I'm using a 20D common nail, four inch. Set it in there just like that. And whoop, let's try it again. Might have to go a little heavier with that one. Whoop, one more time. All right. So you got to slam a little hard with the four inch. All right, let's do it. There we go. So the bigger, thicker the nail is, the more, you know, elbow grease you're going to have to put on it. See if I get the rhythm of it. So I get four for four. There we go. And you just tap them in. And I only had to use this hand right here. Okay, I wanted to bring you in closer to show you the notch. It's got a little flat side right here, the magnet right here, and it's got a groove right here. So you can see head on, and when you set that nail in there, just like this, it holds the nail. So right now, nothing's holding the nail. So I don't have to use my other hand to set that nail. We go over here to the wood, and see how it sets the nail. Let me get a different angle so you can see it. Set the nail. Just like that. And. All right, ladies and gents. So that's what engineering is about. Taking slight minor changes that can make your work go faster or it improves the performance of your tool. Okay, so it's always good to make improvements. Just like this small little notch this set this sets the nails in there in the wood. And so that way, if you gotta use one hand, you can still set the nail. 
All right, so as you can see from the video that this feature here was engineered and added into the hammer, just like the claw in the hammer to pull the nails out. This feature allows you to set nails one-handed or get into various areas where you can't use two hands to reach that. So you can set the nail in, hammer it where you need to go, and then drive the nail in. Now, another interesting feature that's cool with the framing hammer, but this has been a, a more common feature, is the milled face on the hammer head. Here is the milled face, and what this milled face allows you to do is to accurately strike your framing nails and also keeps it from slipping off your framing nails. Hey guys, I wanted to do a quick comparison on three hammers that I have. These are not all the hammers that I have, but these are some of them. So here we have, which is basically, you could say anywhere from a two pound sledgehammer. And what you notice is it has a very large head. It also has a short handle here and two flat ends, okay? That's a lot different from your claw hammer or the framing ha hammer that we're really getting into detail about today. So the most common one you may be familiar with and most people buy, which is pretty much an all around hammer is this claw hammer now this one has a fiberglass handle the front face of the entire hammer head is smooth now this can cause some slippage sometimes but in your claw hammer you're going to notice also that the arc is very curved downward so you can get a good grip on those nails that you got to pull back out so this is your claw hammer now you're going to notice that this hammer right here it's going to look a lot like your claw hammer, but the difference with this hammer is a couple of things. You can see, first of all, that on the face of this particular hammer, you're going to notice that it has a milled front face. Now, what this allows you to do is to stay on that nail without slipping and hit that nail every time. Also, the face of this particular hammer is much larger than your claw hammer. Now you notice that on the back here you're gonna have more of a flat than a curve on your claw in the back and also there's more weight and more length in the handle itself. So these are the differences and modifications how hammers are engineered and there's all sorts and for example I'll show you one in here this picture here uses more of a slam technique and it's a hammer that you can grip. So these are all different modifications that engineers have done to improve a manual tool. You can see here in this picture uh, the evolution or the different styles of hammers. And slight modifications can actually improve your workflow. So these are some things to think about as young engineers, older engineers alike. You want to think about things that you already use and how they can be improved. And so I thought this was pretty interesting and now I actually know what this little notch is on the hammer. The next video we'll be doing a full construction video on how to make a patio cover. Now this keeps you out of the elements and allows you to use your patio in different seasons. Also, we're gonna be covering some product reviews of some off-grid options for grooming and we're gonna to touch on that in a little bit in the next week and also, if you really learned something about this video and you really enjoyed the video, give it a thumbs up, share it with somebody, and definitely subscribe to the channel. Also, if you would like to support the CLO Academy or the channel itself, you can hit the links in the details below. You already know what it is. I'm working on projects while working on projects. So, there's always going to be some new footage coming out. So, definitely stay subscribed, hit that notification bell, and definitely like and share the video. Guys, you know what it is. I'll see you on the next video. Got to get back to work.